All right, how's it going? This is Talk Quant Finance. Today, we're going to be tackling the question of what should I study in college for quant finance or what degree should I get? What major should I get? I'm going to give a quick disclaimer. This video is very, very general. I'm going to aim to give you a ballpark idea of what's needed for quant finance. However, the industry is very diverse and also very secretive. So inevitably, I'm going to fail to address the certain nuances. Please take my words with a grain of salt. With that being said, if you're not familiar with quant finance, quick introduction of it is that it describes careers and industries that take a very quantitative approach to finance problems, and it tends to have a reputation for very high compensation or pay, oftentimes multi six figure salaries at the entry level with potential comp well into the millions later on. This is true for front office and high level jobs at predominantly hedge funds or proprietary trading firms. So some big names that you might know about include the likes of Jane Street, Citadel Securities, and D.E. Shaw, just to name a few. In terms of what you need to study or what kind of degrees you need to get for quant finance, degrees in math and CS tend to be the strongest options, but other majors with high quantitative rigor like engineering, applied math, statistics, physics, and so on are also very valuable. The goal is to learn material dealing with a lot of the fundamental skills in statistical analysis, algorithms, probabilities, stochastic calculus, and so on. With that being said, common misconception is that degrees such as finance, economics, business, or similar fields are also viable as standalone options. The reason that quant finance tends to overlook students whose fields of study are limited to things like finance or economics is because they lack that quantitative rigor to be in comparison to the aforementioned math or physics-based fields, especially in the fields that I mentioned before. Now, depending on your role, you'll also be expected to have a limited to highly proficient experience in different coding languages and analysis tools. Some common ones, again, this is not comprehensive, include Python, C++, Java, C Sharp, MATLAB, Pandas, and R. Through learning in both your classes at school and also refining your skills in your personal time, your extracurriculars, or your research, you should become familiar familiarized with a few of these skills depending on what specific role you're trying to pursue in your quant finance career, which I will get into momentarily. But you know, going back to studies, the general purpose is to gain a strong fundamental knowledge and proficiency in a math or physics-based field. Ideally, your education or your research also has some relation to the skills that overlap in quant finance, like heavy modeling or programming, as opposed to maybe very abstract maths. Although you're not necessarily expected to develop your own trading strategies. Quant firms will utilize your educational background and your skills to train you on their specific trading strategies and their specific structure once you have been hired. Okay, with that being said, the level of education and specific skills that you need vary based on your job in quant finance. There's a number of roles in quant finance. I'm going to cover three that tend to have the most streamlined internship and recruiting opportunities straight out of higher education or in your higher education slash college experience. To start off, we have quant researchers or researchers. These positions are most often filled with PhD holders or exceptionally strong undergraduates or master's students, although some firms are more willing to hire undergraduates than others. Degrees in math and CS are generally the most relevant for researcher roles. Candidates also have to be proficient in Python as well as analysis environments like MATLAB or R. The interviews usually cover linear regression, stats, coding, probability puzzles. Their responsibility is to develop strategies or signals, generate hypotheses, and build the models that traders will deploy live. The role involves a substantial amount of coding, so it suits people who enjoy applying the scientific method, conducting lots of research, and working in a bit of a slower pace environment than trading. Quant researchers' success is really going to be judged on whether or not their model is successful or not. Now, Next up are the quant traders. They're typically drawn from undergrad or master's programs more commonly. Trader roles require really strong quantitative skills again, but not necessarily that really formal research background or that PhD background that's expected of most quant researchers. So degrees in math or physics-based fields are common and very well suited for trading roles. Now, 
Traders don't really do you know, manual buying and selling like you might be imagining. They monitor the position recommendations in real time. They evaluate whether uh, they make sense, whether the models are performing in a way that makes sense, and they might apply small adjustments to account for the daily market conditions. So they really have to think on their feet. So again, because of that nature, the trading interviews generally demand very strong mental maths, very strong problem solving, probability problem solving on the spot rather than very intensive coding tests or research experience. So in practice, traders do a fair amount of data science work in Python with pandas or similar libraries. And depending on the firm, they also might do some desk specific research or projects. But generally, the trader role is a bit different and tends to require a little bit less of a formal research background as quant researchers. Now, next up, we have quant developers, or if we're just going to talk about them in, I guess, I feel like a more standard or realistic way, software engineers. That's what quant developers generally work as. Some organizations, some firms distinguish between general developers and quant developers while others don't. But for these roles, really computer science and a strong programming ability is the most important thing. I mean, the interview processes are very close to standard software engineering interviews, although they might have some more math or probability questions built into them. Devs tackle or devs or software engineers, they tackle a lot of practical systems problems. So they want to ensure that a signal developed by the researchers can be computed fast enough. They want to handle missing data or make sure that signal updates can be reliable in real time. At prop shops and hedge funds, you also might see developers work on low latency C++ systems, or they might build tools for traders and researchers. Devs also might be embedded in a research team and then their role there will be to implement the researcher strategy. So generally, these developer software engineering positions offer a bit more stability than the trader or researcher roles, but also with less comp or upside in some instances. By less, I mean entry level dev roles at a lot of top firms will still command multi six figure salaries starting out. OK, so. Large quant funds, they typically divide this responsibility between researchers, devs, and traders. Again, these three roles, I'm just talking about them because they tend to be common and pretty streamlined, but they are most definitely not all of the roles in quants. And especially at small firms, you might see some of these roles being combined as well because they don't have enough PNL to justify hiring more people and splitting up all of this infrastructure. With that being said, the main takeaway that you should get from this video is that math, physics, or CS based degrees are the absolute best if you're trying to break into quant finance stuff that is not as quantitatively intensive like economics or finance are definitely at a disadvantage compared to maths or physics based degrees this is yeah the general idea of what to study for quant finance i'll try to post more stuff talking about extracurriculars research or internship opportunities that are particularly strong for quant as well and i'm going to try and keep making videos explaining quant for the student's perspective and also i'm going to try and get into some maybe more traditional finance videos as well talking about those careers industries within there so i hope this video helped you and good luck. That's Tonquat Finance.